oftentimes you might run into some old photos or even just very archaic photos that your relatives or someone you know uh, has and you scan them in and want to doctor them up and maybe represent them in such a way. Uh, those photos are often taken with older technology so they end up with dust and scratches that were present on the lens when you know the photo was taken so it just happened to be in the image. Affinity Photo comes with a nice filter that allows you to adjust the actual noise within an image um, and the scratches and all of those things. So there's a filter under noise um, called dust and scratches. And what it does is kind of creates a median between the tones in the image and the stuff that might be the uh, fragments that are causing the dust and scratches to appear. Uh, it kind of softens the blow with those, even though you still see some, but some stuff you can factor out and edit. A little bit goes a long way with this filter. So you, like if you were to use it to the max quantity, you're gonna start to see you know, a very messed up image. So I have just about a couple pixels of radius and a couple percent of tolerance going on with this photo. There's still some issues with the sky here, which we can work out with another technique, but right now I'm gonna apply this and you might wonder why I'm applying it because it's not quite perfect yet. We can go ahead and get rid of some of the fragments at this stage. So a quick way to basically undo what we did to certain parts of this photo is the undo brush tool. So it's something you just did, you can go ahead and paint back. So let me brush this back in real quick. So parts of this image are sharper than others like this skyline. So we want to bring that back in just to kind of give it a better looking effect. And then you'll still see some, some issues with the sky. So what we can do there is actually paint a new sky on, or we can go through with a blemish tool and touch it up that way. Go, let's try the approach of creating a new layer. And we're gonna sample this layer by holding option and grab that color. I first need a paintbrush though. So let's get the right brush in play. Just a basic brush for now, we'll kind of make it larger, decrease the hardness pretty much all the way. Maybe about 100 pixels in width to start. And our color, if we hold option and click at the same time, you can sample a bit of the photo. So I'll go ahead and do that. And that's gonna be in our palette here. So we can go ahead and click that to assign it. And in our new pixel layer, we can start painting in that color, possibly just you know, creating that effect. There is a slight gradient on this image of the blue, so it's not gonna be 100% what we're going for, but I think it could work. So I'm gonna use my bracket keys to increase this width of the brush a bit. And we could try a different blend mode perhaps with this just to give it a different look and feel, see how it looks. The soft light, it's working, but it's not quite where we want it. So I think we'll leave it at normal and then just more or less fill this pixel with a gradient as a overlay. So let's go and try that. And I'll use the same color that is in our palette there. If I can grab it, I need this hex code. So I'll copy that, Command C for me, RGB hex and then you can paste it in this field. So we've got that and we want it a bit lighter on this side and we're gonna rotate this in a second, but I'm gonna paste that same code there, um, add a bit of noise and then just brighten this ever so slightly. So I might actually do the HSL option here just to get a better perspective. And then we can change this angle to be the opposite. So we want it to be 90, I think, no, just 270. So there we've got that gradient going on. We could scale where that gradient exists in this line. So you can adjust this line here in the middle to be a little more believable. I think this color could be a little lighter. Maybe something like that. And we can add noise to each color. So I'll add a little bit just to bring back some, some realness to that sky in this older photo. So we still have this dark band around the edge over on the left and we can adjust that with cropping. So I'll go ahead and do that. Just use our, just a custom crop here. 
from the bottom as well and a little bit to the right. So when you crop an affinity photo, you're essentially just resizing your canvas. To get this to be final, you would need to rasterize this down. Uh, you can go ahead and you know just do that on the layer and rasterize down. So once it's final, we'll go ahead and leave it as is. And that should be it. So that's how you use the dust and scratches filter to do a lot more with your photos. Looks like there's a little more on this head. Uh, that shouldn't be there, so maybe we can use the Glimish or Cleanup tool. I really like the end painting brush, so you could just click and point and that stuff should come right off. And then of course, to make this even more believable, you could uh, add some more layer effects to it or live filter layers. So we could add, say, a vignette to increase the dynamics in the photos. So you can increase the exposure. We'll actually decrease it and the hardness will be pretty low so it's more central. Scale it quite a bit. In the shape you could make it different, like more of an oval since it's kind of a landscape shot. And it's a live vignette so we could just leave it as is. You could add a blend mode on it and kind of incorporate it into the photo, really enhance it. Luminosity looks okay. I think normal and luminosity are pretty close. I think I like that. And maybe we'll increase the overall brightness and contrast. I really like to use curves personally, so uh, kind of decrease that bit and increase this bit. It makes it a little more punchy in the end. Okay, so there you have it. We essentially removed most of the dust and fragments in this photo. Uh, it started, if I go back in my history to the very beginning, we can go way to the beginning, and we had a photo like this. And here we come back after adding some edits and fixes and a, a couple new layers and effects. And we're back to a decently looking photo that is shot quite long ago, but is looking a bit more modern.